Good evening, children. Tonight I'm going to read you the story called The Frog King by Jacob and Wilhelm Grimm. In old times, when wishing still helped oneself, there lived a king whose daughters were all beautiful, but the youngest was so beautiful that the sun itself, which had seen so much, was astonished whenever it shone in her face. Close by the king's castle lay a great dark forest, and under an old lime tree in front of the forest was a well. And when the day was very warm, the king's child went out into the forest and sat down by the cool fountain. And when she was dull, she took out a golden ball and threw it up on high and caught it. And this golden ball was her favorite plaything. Now it so happened that on one occasion the princess's golden ball did not fall into the little hand outstretched for it, but on to the ground beyond and rolled straight into the water. The king's daughter followed it with her eyes, but it vanished, and the well was deep, so deep that the bottom of it could not be seen. Upon this she began to cry, and cried louder and louder and would not be comforted. And as she lamented, someone said to her, What ails thee, king's daughter? Thou weepest so that even a stone would show pity. She looked round to the side from whence the voice came, and saw a frog stretching forth its thick, ugly head from the water. Ah, old water splasher, is it thou? said she. I am weeping for my golden ball, which has fallen into the well. Be quiet, do not weep, answered the frog. I can help thee, but what wilt thou give me if I bring thy plaything up again? Whatever thou wilt have, dear frog, said she, my clothes, my pearls and jewels, and even the golden crown which I am wearing. The frog answered, I do not care for thy clothes, thy pearls or jewels, or thy golden crown, but if thou wilt love me, and let me be thy companion and playfellow, and sit by thee at thy little table, and eat off thy little golden plate, and drink from thy little golden cup, and sleep in thy little bed. If thou wilt promise me this, I will go down below, and bring thee up thy golden ball again. Oh yes, said she, I promise thee all that thou wishest, if thou wilt but bring me my ball back again. She, however, thought, how the silly frog does talk. He lives in the water with other frogs and croaks and can be no companion for any human being. But the frog, when he had received his promise, put his head into the water and sank down and in a short while came swimming up again with the ball in his mouth and threw it into the grass. The king's daughter was delighted to see her pretty plaything once more and picked it up and ran away with it. Wait, wait, said the frog, take me with thee. I can't run as thou canst. But what did it avail him to scream his croak, croak, croak after her as loudly as he could? She did not listen to it, but ran home and soon forgot the poor frog who was forced to go back into his well again. The next day, when she had seated herself at table with the king and all the courtiers and was eating from her little golden plate, something came creeping splish, splash, splish, splash up the marble staircase, and when it had got to the top, it knocked on the door and cried, Princess, youngest princess, open the door for me. She ran to see who was outside, but when she opened the door, there sat the frog in front of it. Then she slammed the door to her too in, in a great haste, sat down to dinner again, and was quite frightened. The king saw plainly that her heart was beating violently and said, My child, what art thou so afraid of? If there perchance a giant outside who was to carry thee away? Ah, no, replied she, it is no giant but a disgusting frog. What does a frog want with thee? Ah, dear father, yesterday I was in the forest, sitting by the well, playing with my golden ball, when it fell into the water, 
and because I cried so, the frog brought it out for me, and because he insisted, I promised him he should be my companion, but I never thought he would be able to come out of the water, and now he is outside and wants to come in. In the meantime, it knocked a second time and cried out, Princess, youngest princess, open the door for me. Dost thou not know what thou saidst to me yesterday by the cool waters of the fountain? Princess, youngest princess, open the door for me. Then the king said, That which thou hast promised must thou perform. Go and let him in. She went and opened the door, and the frog hopped in and followed her step by step to her chair. There he sat and cried, Lift me up beside thee. She delayed until at last her father commanded her to do it. When the frog was once on the chair, he wanted to be on the table. And when he was on the table, he said, Now push thy little golden plate near to me that we may eat together. She did this, but it was easy to see that she did not do it willingly. The frog enjoyed what he ate, but almost every mouthful she took choked her. At length, he said, I have eaten and am satisfied. Now I am tired. Carry me to thy little room and make thy little silken bed ready, and we will both lie down and go to sleep. The king's daughter began to cry, for she was afraid of the cold frog, which, he did not like to, which she did not like to touch, and which was now to sleep in her pretty clean little bed. But the king grew angry and said, He who helped thee when thou wert in trouble ought not afterwards to be despised by thee. So she took hold of the frog with two fingers and carried him upstairs and put him in a corner. But when she was in bed, he crept to her and said, I am tired. I want to sleep as well as thou. Lift me up or I will tell thy father. Then she was terribly angry, and took him up and threw him with all her might against the wall. Now thou wilt be quiet, odious frog, said she. But when he fell down, he was no frog but a king's son, with beautiful kind eyes. He, by her father's will, was now her dear companion and husband. Then he told her how he had been bewitched by a wicked witch, and how no one could have delivered him, but from the well but herself, and that tomorrow they would go together into his kingdom. Then they went to sleep, and next morning, when the sun awoke them, a carriage came driving up with eight white horses, which had white ostrich feathers on their heads, and were harnessed with golden chains, and behind them stood the young king's servant, Faithful Henry. Faithful Henry had been so unhappy when his master was changed into a frog that he had caused three iron bands to be laid round his heart, lest it burst with grief and sadness. The carriage was to conduct the young king to, into his kingdom. Faithful Henry helped them both in and placed himself behind again and was full of joy because of the deliverance. And when they had driven a part of the way, the king's son heard a cracking behind him, as if something had broken. So he turned around and said, Henry, the carriage is breaking. No, master, it is not the carriage. It is a band from my heart, which was put there in my great pain when you were a frog and imprisoned in the well. Again and once again, while they were on their way, something cracked, and each time the king's son thought the carriage was breaking, but it was only the bands which were springing from the heart of faithful Henry because his master was free and happy. And that is the end of that story. I hope you enjoy it. It's a very old story and one that has been passed down to, among people for generations. I love you very much. I can't wait to see you again soon. God bless you. Good night.